Bringing the Defence Industry Minister Steve Chobot now. He joins us here in the studio on uh, the boats issue. We now have um, Mike Pizzolo essentially making it clear in Senate estimates yesterday that the advice he gave was on the Senate amended legislation. Yeah. He seems satisfied with the bill that passed the House. So Labor has followed security advice. No, I don't, I don't think that's the case at all. What, what's very clear uh, is that, and he, he made this point um, very clear in estimates last night, uh, this is the beginning of the dismantling of offshore processing. Um, we see this morning uh, where we can see the impact of Labor's legislation. I mean, in essence, it comes down to this. There were 12 bases under Section 501, I think, of the Act, where it stipulates what it is that a minister can reject an applicant in terms of, you know, character grounds, those kinds of things. Labor's taken 11 of those 12 and got rid of them and left only one there for the minister to use. Now, the problem with this is that we're going to see hundreds of people come from Manus and Nauru to Australia. We're sending a very clear message to a range of people that um, over time this could become more of a problem because if Labor's prepared to blink once now, uh, you sure as hell could bet they'll blink twice after the election if they were successful, and that becomes a major problem for our country. We will go back to the situation we saw, which was directly responsible for 50,000 people coming to this country and sadly 1,200 deaths. But 900, and this is the question I asked Mr Dutton as well, yes. 900 or thereabouts have already been transferred here under ministerial discretion. Uh, the Prime Minister says people smugglers don't look at nuance. Well, they won't be looking at the nuance as to whether or not the minister decides or whether a medical panel decides. No, it's the same outcome. It's the same there cohort coming here. There is a massive here. difference, an absolutely massive difference. And that is that ultimately under the existing system which works, and in fact, to some extent, your question goes to testify that the existing system works. But the key difference between the current situation and what Labor's done, as I said, comes back to the fact that there were 12 grounds there upon which a minister could make an assessment, which have now been ripped out from the, as, as a policy tool, ripped away from the government and from the minister. So that is a very profound difference, um, Kieran, and that's the reason why Labor's legislation is going to, I believe, in time, only this indicate a policy it's where only they this will blink. Board, isn't it? But they, it so... indicates that Labor's prepared to walk away from tough border protection and tough policies. And Australians, I don't believe, will countenance this. There is nothing humane about walking away from a regime that's working. There's nothing humane about opening up this trade again. And there's nothing humane about people dying at sea. So I reject entirely that this is a more humane policy. This is a policy that is a green light to, unfortunately, going back to where we were. The security agencies seem to disagree with you because that's not the advice that Mike Pozzolo gave the Labor Party. He seems satisfied. I don't know how much more clear Mike Pozzolo could have been last night. He said this is the beginning of the dismantling of offshore processing. I mean, the, the, those, those are, that is the clear evidence that's gone before Senate estimates. The beginning of the dismantling of offshore processing, that's what Labor's policy does. And it will absolutely send... I mean, we even saw reports last week of where people smugglers were, in, were considering restarting the trade and saying they will test a shortened government if, you know, and I hope this doesn't happen, but if Labor gets elected. Do you think that uh, it's been counterproductive with some of your colleagues talking about rapists and pedophiles and that sort of, you know, hyperbole... When and you're basically tarnishing a whole group of a thousand people with that brush, Kieran. There's nothing, absolutely nothing, uh, uh, that you would describe as being hyperbole about that. The, the simple fact is that you could have someone who was in uh, a relationship with a, a minor, for example, who previously that could be taken into account by the minister, who now under this legislation they can't be taken into account, and that's a very big difference. This goes to my point. How that I was could making it not earlier. be taken? Because because out of the twelve tools available. But that's a crime. 12 provisions. If you're having... Well, that's, that, that may be a crime. crime if it's been prosecuted, but if it hasn't been prosecuted, it may not be a crime, but it might be intelligence that we have. Under the existing law, that can be taken into account because the Minister has much broader powers to look at all the information and to make but an The problem assessment. is, like, you, you and others are saying that, that this is an issue, but it, there are a thousand people there. And if this is an issue with one or two, is it fair to then Karen, the, the put the issue, whole, whole no, no, cohort... The issue on one here, or two or three people. The issue here is the tools that we're giving the minister, and I don't care whether it's a Liberal minister or a Labor minister. The issue is the tools that we're giving the minister to make an assessment about whether this person is the right person and of the right character to come into the country. The That's what the said, central that issue of this is. There would need to be is. sick or assessed to be sick. You would need to release them from detention. And, every, and, we know, and now your government is saying that these people are going to go to Christmas Island and we anyway. Know, and we know, that every doctor, and we know that every doctor uh, who's been on these get-up advertisements and things like that... You appoint the doctor. 
doctors. We know that every doctor who who are on well, we know that every doctor who's involved in this Get Up campaign uh, a little so more than a little more. Backed by get no, 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 up hang on. Panel. Let me. Can I finish? A little more than activists in this space. Uh, there is a very high risk that you'll have a situation where activist doctors will seek to fast track these people. We've already seen where they're expecting hundreds and hundreds of these people to come to Australia. And the key point is this, Labor can argue and wrangle as much as they want. The fact is they have ripped out from underneath the minister the ability to make assessments it's on character, to make minutes. assessments on character grounds. And that is the problem that we've got. But if there's a criminal that comes to you, someone facing allegations, they're locked up anyway, aren't they? The, the, Karen, they, they will we be wouldn't detained. even have this person come into the country. I mean, this, this so-called robust defence uh, for Labor's policy, I mean, this is a weakening of our... This is an objective fact. Labor has weakened the process that currently is in place and is working. And Labor's watered down, weakened laws will mean a minister cannot take into account the same character issues mm. that they could previously. And that's just an objective fact. Well, it looks like you're a weakened government, and that might be an objective fact as well, given you're making concessions in this area. Also, uh, well, we didn't. We, we, we stood, to, no, no, hang on. We stood our ground. We stood our Labor. ground on every aspect of this. We made it very clear that we were not going to capitulate. We made it very clear what the consequences of Labor and mm. the crossbenchers changes would be. So I reject entirely well, that we've Michael weakened Zorba anything. Well, confirmed last night that these people are going to be uh, sent to Christmas Island anyway. But my point is, why don't you just go to an election? You're making concessions all over the joint at the moment. Well, that's a preposterous thing to say. We'll be in an election in May, um, and uh, the Prime Minister's made that clear multiple times. Why is it times. preposterous? We the Royal Commission, you've, you've lost a vote. You, you vote, you know, you're, the small business vote you wouldn't have backed. That in terms of small business the leadership, fact is, you are you're losing votes and conceding, as Laura said, all over the place. Yeah, but, but I mean, if that was the objective measure, then Labor should have gone to an election 30 times over when they were last in government. I mean, you've got to deal with the numbers as they I are on the floor. Of the, well, the time, you've got to deal with the numbers as they are on the floor of the Parliament. Exactly and so when you deal with the numbers as they are on the floor of the Parliament, we've still got to make important decisions about the resourcing, about the decisions we take in relation to budget appropriations and all of those kinds of things. The fact is that as a government, we have a really strong track record. What we're seeing now is the uh, first cracks from the potential of a shortened government. We're making it very clear to Australians that there is a world of difference between us and Labor, uh, and especially when it comes to border protection and border sovereignty. Just a quick one on the China, well, we say China, that's the, 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 the country that's seen as the culprit for the hacking. Are you particularly concerned about this in terms of defence industry, which is your portfolio? Obviously, it's something we as a nation would want to stop, whether it be China, Russia, whoever else. Well, we're continuing to see increases in terms of this type of activity. We certainly see a lot of, um, you know, attempts to hack increasingly across the board, both in terms of defence as well as civilian. We've got to make sure that we harden up our infrastructure, uh, whether it's the banking system or, you know, all the actual systems that the army uses, or indeed our parliament. All the parties. I mean, across the board, we're seeing continual efforts made by nation states in this space. And, you know, Australia is uh, doing a, a hell of a lot to make sure that we can withstand these attacks. Minister, thanks. We'll talk to you soon.